Greetings, my friends. Thank you for joining me in this first episode of Drake's Chest, but now in physical quality, would I say. Uh, my native language is Portuguese, then you have you find me maybe missing a few words or taking a little time to figure out what to speak, but I believe this video and this content has a lot of reach outside Brazil and foreigners from United States, Canada, France, um, maybe Asia, I don't know, where this game was, was released for PlayStation 1 in Japanese language. Maybe someone will, will, will relate to this. But this is mainly uh, a, a very special gift for me since it was given by my father to me. One of the first games that we played together, we played Shadow of the Comet, which is the first Call of Cthulhu game for computer. And we also played Prisoner of Ice, which is a little bit easier in difficulty settings, in normal settings. And we, we specialized in, in Prisoner of Ice because... Uh, Shadow of the Comet was so damn difficult, you know. Um, lots of puzzles, and we we didn't. I didn't know how to talk in English, how to, how to read in English. My father still is not very good in English, so we we kind of let that game uh, maybe a little a little by by our sides. And we we focus mainly in Prisoner of Ice, Call of Cthulhu Prisoner of Ice, in which we were able to finish the game, but we had a few difficulties. But today's video is not for me to tell my my experience, but nowadays I, I do mainly speedruns of this game. Uh, I possess a few world records since uh, there's a, a little little player base, but we do have uh, Hicks Rothman from France, which holds uh, one of the world records. And we have uh, players from all over the world who maybe sometime uh, found this game uh, in Steam library or maybe in good old, good old games, I don't know. And if you have the curiosity to play the game, you have the Izu, you, you will buy the Izu. But here is the physical Portuguese copy of it, and I want to share with the whole YouTube. So I, I did this video in Portuguese, uh, but I believe in the English version of it will be much more rewarding. But this time, let's begin with the, the CD itself. And, and I'm using gloves because it's very old, and I'm, I keep it uh, in my personal safe. And uh, maybe I will uh, damage it more than it already is, but I will end up damaging it. So, for the CD itself, it's, I don't know the, if the English version was made like this, but we have Sony Music, who were responsible for for publishing this this media in Brazil. We have their logo here. We have the the stone disc, né? the sun disc, the solar disc here. We have the Call of Cthulhu logo in its original font here. I, I believe it's it's very hard to see in, in yellow. I would put it in black, but maybe it would damage the stone circle here behind. We have the Prisoner of Ice logo as it is in the, in the brochure. Here we say to, it is prohibited to reproduce, to sell, and even to rent in a few ways. It was published by Sony Music in Brazil, dubbed in Portuguese in Rio de Janeiro, so the characters in this game for the Portuguese version have a lot of accent for, from Rio de Janeiro. We have a few different accents here inside Brazil, so you can you can hear if you're, if you're Brazilian, you can... Uh, it is per you can notice that the game itself was dubbed in, in Rio de Janeiro. Even if you didn't read here, Rio de Janeiro, you know that by the accent it was dubbed in Rio. That is not a problem. I believe the dubbing, 
the Portuguese dubbing was actually a little better than the English dub version of this, which is mostly criticized. Even the Portuguese version, which used the English version as an, a model, it is heavily criticized. We have many YouTube videos where people just make fun of it. I, I don't like it because it, I hold this game very specially to me. It is very dear to me. And I, I, I have to, to bear with that, that criticism. But I, I believe that it has much more good points than it has bad points. But this is the CD itself. We have the HMS Victoria. We have the... Um, Englishman soldier being dragged by the prisoner to one of those crates. Behind here we have Buenos Aires uh, Prep Edwards Base, HMA, HMA's Victoria, and Slow Saddler Base. Here we have the synopsis for the game, which says that Ryan uh, is the only one capable of saving the human race from the prisoner's menace. And because uh, because he's he's not from this time, then uh, lots of spoilers over here. Lots of spoilers. If you're if you're going to play the game, don't read this. Don't read this. Go for your Steam synopsis and have lots of fun. It's not a long game. For my speed runs in the standard settings, I get mainly to 25 to 20 minutes. But you have to to play this game truly. Lots of puzzles. Pay attention to the dialogues and have fun. Here, the brochure. It comes with the with the CD. Um, you see mainly Ryan, the Arctic. Then you see Arctic. You see a little bit of South America because you go for Buenos Aires in this game. Um, HMS Victoria. The Englishman being dragged by the prisoners to the crate, which which was salvaged from the Joe Sadler base, and you see here he is reading the Necronomicon. Yes, he's reading the 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 damned book, the book of the dead. A lots of spoilers here. You see the prisoner of ice font, the comet logos, which refer to the Halley comet, Infogrames logo. As it was shown in the iMotion, iMotion games, you see now in black and white. I won't start reading all, a whole of this in Portuguese to you guys, it, since it will become very, very boring. But here you you see what you have, uh, uh, maybe a summary, uh, how how the game works, necessary equipment equipment, starting your game, how to play Prisoner of Ice, and error messages that you may get. Here you see the art from the Captain Sears sequence, where the cultists are worshipping Cthulhu and the prisoners, maybe the old, the old ancients, let's not put it this way. Like here you have the, the instructions that you need, the necessary equipment, here you see one of the cultists, the Englishman being dragged to the crate, and most of it are in, it is an instruction, a manual. I thought it would have something from the from the history here. Here you see Dietrich summoning a, a prisoner. Let's see if you guys can get it. I I, I believe you can. And the most significant. Here you have just just a little synopsis that you will be Lieutenant Ryan, a young officer from British the American Secret Services that is sent for a in a mission for the Royal British just uh, months before the Second World War. Uh, an European member of the enemy. Uh, you know that it's Germany because you you fight officers from the from the Second World War. Dietrich is one of them. You will find out. Uh, and your mission is to uh, to maybe to 
how can I say that? I mean, well, maybe your your mission is to prevent that the prisoner of prisoners of ice get the whole world and that the earth will be again invaded by the great old ones. That's mainly what it is saying here. Here you see an an early art of Lieutenant Ryan as the stone circle here. And the mainly the mainly thing that calls me a lot in this manual is this photo right here that I could not find in the internet. So maybe I will upload it right here. Here you see the second scenario in the Buenos Aires library, which is the second the second place you visit, the second country you visit in the game. You see here the the secret, the hidden passage. You see Ryan and you see Diane Parker, which is the, the daughter of Howard Parker, the protagonist of Shadow of the Comet. And here you see something from the beta, because this does not happen in the game at all. This one is one of the policemen, the, the Argentinian policeman that comes to, uh, after he hears the gunshot made by the German spy. He never came to this room in the official release of the game. This is from the beta, and this maybe was done for, for this manual only, or was a screenshot taken in the early stages of the game. Here you see some error messages, and the kinds of error you may get. Epilepsy problems that you may have, this is very important, one of the early games that Real cared about this. Infogrames was really vocal about this. And here you see the, the Call of Cthulhu logo, Chosium logo, and Infogrames logo. Unfortunately, it's a bit of damage because of my handling as a kid. I had no proper handling, and you see here it is a little damaged, but not nothing that can. Uh, that is here a little bit damaged as well but mainly the the fun behind it is that is something that is very dear to me and i would like to share with you guys i plan to do more of this i don't have the shadow of the comet uh, brochure but i have the cd but i can do uh, maybe a playthrough and walkthrough it is in my plans but I wanted to share this with you guys. Thank you very much. I will ask you very briefly to please give a like to the video, uh, share, subscribe. I know it's uh, now that I am recording this this video, it's a uh, 16 subscribers channel. I had a, a bigger one, but it was it was taken out. So I, it's, I am starting again, and I would like you to support the channel in any way you can. So if you're a fan of Cthulhu Mythos, if you're a fan of Prisoner of Ice, if you like speedrunning, here you'll find something that will make you worth a while. Thank you very much. Stay tuned to the channel.